it's time to liberate that ROM. Alrighty, part three. Uh, part two is pretty long. I do apologize for anyone who watched that video all the way through. That was uh, quite pain, painful even for me. It took me, well, if you include sleep, well over 12 hours to do. So you really only saw the abridged version. I could have included me sleeping, but I didn't because I'm a kind person. So here we are with the uh, GQ4X EEPROM programmer. Uh, we have the 16-bit adapter which allows us to dump fantastic chips like the 27C4096 and the 27C1024. In this case we'll be using the 4096 apparently or possibly the 4002 but you know I'll just try one see what happens. So USB programmer initializing Or initialized. Oh, might want to zoom you in there so you can see what's going on. Might want to view this in uh, 720p if you want to actually see anything. And we want 27C4096. Since these are mask ROMs, as in they don't actually tell you, you know, what chip it is, you have to pretty much guess. So you just choose the generic one. Tells me that it needs the 16-bit adapter, which I just happen to have. And now that's in. You can just press read, I suppose. Oh, I like it already. So I'll just bring you in for a closer look. I see a copy, some brackets, a copyright, so copyright Sega. Oh, I could never decode these things. Oh, there we go. Byte swap. So there you go, 2.11C. 28th of May. 2003. So now we have the ROM. Oh, I should probably save it somewhere. Save it as Sega. <laughs> yeah, I'm creative. And there it is on the desktop. I'll fire up an emulator and give it a try. I love trial and error. It's one of my favourite pastimes, uh, just discovering things after learning about them. Uh, turns out the 27C4096 might have been a bit overkill. Uh, that gave a 512 kilobyte image, which, you know, that's, that's pretty, pretty beefy. I uh, had a look at, compared it with some other Sega BIOSes that have been dumped, and they weigh in at about 128k. So I thought, okay, let's try the uh, 27C1024 and byte swapped it uh, and yeah, it, it seems to be good so what I did is since I couldn't work out how to configure the emulators properly or I'm lazy and knew that the Mega EverDrive or EverDrive MD either one both support loading BIOSes for the Sega CD units we can uh, just go in here and have a look so they've so got Sega.bin which was the original one uh, Japanese BIOS just as a test which I downloaded off the net and Sega 3 which is my baby and there we have it version 2.11 wasn't that easy looks good
just beautiful. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you dump a BIOS from an Iowa Mega CD game unit. So, thanks for watching. I uh, probably should just note down the, there we go, the actual chip itself. MPR-15768-T. Week 22, 1994. Thanks for watching. RetroJunkie.net for more. And that's how you do it. Thanks for watching.